Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Vancouver Kingsway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, I think we, all members of this House, approach this debate with a very trenchant and acute sense of the crisis that are gripping communities across this country. The opioid overdose crisis is something that is not restricted to any one province or territory, but is affecting communities from British Columbia to Newfoundland and Labrador, from, uh, the, from Inuit uh, territories all the way down to the border with the United States. In every major city, from Vancouver to Edmonton to Calgary, Winnipeg, Toronto, Montreal, uh, even I'm told Cape Breton is having a number of uh, serious problems with opioid overdoses. So this is something that's not uh, not uh, restricted to any one place and is touching communities and families across our country. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, we're here today uh, debating uh, C-37 because the Conservatives have put in amendments here at the report stage um, that they could not get past that committee. And, of course, we're dealing with one amendment from uh, the member for Saanich Gulf Islands as well. It has been the New Democrats' consistent position on this matter going back over a year now that the opioid overdose crisis is a national public health emergency and we need action now. Yeah. <clears throat> it has been our position that this is a matter and a political issue that's different than many, many other issues. In fact, almost every other issue that comes before this House because it's an issue that affects life and death. The consequences of the decisions we take in this House, the consequences of the decisions that we don't take in this House have the effect of perhaps meaning someone lives or dies on the streets of Canada today. We can't say that about every issue in this House. And it's that seriousness, that sober reality that New Democrats bring to this debate and have brought to this debate from the beginning. Now, I'm going to start by uh, commenting that uh, the previous speaker on behalf of the Liberal government uh, felt that the government had been, has been doing everything possible that it could be doing. Well, that is demonstrably false, Mr. Speaker. There are many, many factors that this government uh, has failed to take into account and many actions it has not taken up to now, and there remain before us literally dozens of actions that are open to this government to take to respond to this overdose crisis that it seems reluctant to do. Interestingly, the last speaker just talked about it taking 16 months for the uh, three supervised consumption sites in Montreal to be approved, and he blamed that on the previous Conservative government. Now, it's true that that application was dealt with under Conservative legislation introduced in 2015, but 16 months is about the length of time that this Liberal government has been in power. And so I think it's unjust for them to blame that on the previous government. When New Democrats stood in this House a year ago, 12 months ago, and said to this government that they should introduce legislation to repeal or amend C2, the legislation that makes it virtually impossible to open safe consumption sites. Uh, and, to, and to act on that immediately. What was the response of the government at that time? They didn't think that was necessary. The health minister publicly stated that she didn't see the problem with the act. If she did eventually see a problem with the act, she would act at that point. But she felt that the, 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 the remedy for dealing with uh, the problems of C2 were administrative. She did not acknowledge or understand that the problem was the 26 separate criteria that were in the act itself. And it's funny because the, my honourable colleague, uh, the member for Vancouver Centre, former Liberal health critic, at the time the Conservatives brought in their bill in 2015, she nailed it on the head, as did the New Democrats. She identified that the Bill C-2 was specifically brought in by the Conservatives to prevent the opening of safe consumption sites. Yet when the Liberals came into power, suddenly they changed. Suddenly, eh, the act they could work with. In that year that we've waited before we sit here today, finally dealing with C2, finally bringing in Bill C37, which, which actually streamlines this act, how many Canadians have died? Well, approximately 2,000, Mr. Speaker. That's how many Canadians have died. Now, not all of those deaths would have been preventable, but certainly, when we know that safe consumption sites save lives, we know that the sooner we can get safe consumption sites open across this country, the sooner we'll start saving lives. Mm -hmm. So we know that there were Canadians that died unnecessarily because of the delay of this government. And that's a fact, Mr. Speaker. Now, uh, the, the thing about the Conservative uh, amendments here today are the Conservatives, with great respect, still are 
remaining stuck in their ideological perspective that they want to slow down the introduction of safe consumption sites. I'll say it right here. I believe that the vast majority of Conservatives in this House don't actually support safe consumption sites. The only reason that they brought in legislation was because they fought insight all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada when the Supreme Court of Canada, based on evidence, ruled that the government had to grant a Section 56 exemption, so the Conservatives reluctantly brought in legislation to do so. But they did so with poison pills, 26 of them as a matter of fact. And it had the desired effect, Mr. Speaker, because in the time that the Conservatives brought in C2 in this House, not a single safe consumption site is opened in this country. So I think uh, that's not a coincidence, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, what we've done here, and this legislation, I think, uh, tracks this quite well, is it restores the process and the criteria for opening a safe consumption site back to the criteria identified by the Supreme Court of Canada. The Supreme Court of Canada said that the minister must grant an exemption to an applicant who wants to open a safe consumption site if he or she is satisfied that six criteria have been satisfied. That is, an applicant must provide evidence of the intended public health benefits of the site, the local conditions indicating the need for the site, the resources available to support the site, the impact of the site on crime rates, the administrative structure in place to support the site, and expressions of community support or opposition. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to stop for a moment because I continually hear the Conservatives misrepresent this issue. Uh, all parties in this House believe that the expressions of community support or opposition are important and, in fact, must be taken into account by any uh, health minister. And that's in the legislation. Now, uh, uh, it's funny, I hear no's from the Conservatives saying that it's not in sight. It absolutely is in the legislation if they read it. It says expressions of community support and opposition are one of the factors that must be taken into account. Perhaps they can read the legislation that they want to vote on. Now, Mr. Speaker, while I'm on the Conservatives, I have to say this. While we were at Health Committee last week, one of the most bizarre interventions I've ever heard was taken by the Minister, the member for Calgary Confederation. I'm going to quote what he said. In opposing the New Democrats' position that we support legislation to make safe consumption sites easier to open in this country with an appropriate regulatory structure mirroring the six criteria set down by the Supreme Court of Canada. This is what he said. He said, I think the member for Van Vancouver Kingsway's intention here is to try to make the application process for safe injection sites easier. Would you be in a similar position, he asked me, if we were sitting around the table here talking about application processes for pipelines in Alberta? To apply for a pipeline is extremely onerous. It's extremely burdensome and time-consuming. It can often take years. We fought hard as Conservatives to try to make it easier to get pipelines built throughout this country, but we're not talking about pipelines here today. We're talking about safe injection sites. I don't support what you're doing here in your motion or your amendments. However, I am making, again, the comparison between pipelines and safe injection sites. If you're willing to make it easier for us in Alberta, we can make it easier for you to put in safe injection sites throughout the country." End quote. Mr. Speaker, that was the most offensive intervention I have ever heard from any member in this House or Act Committee. To draw a comparison between moving fossil fuels through pipelines and a process that saves Canadian lives is about the more, most offensive, dishonourable comment I have heard made uh, by anybody in this House. To actually suggest that there's a comparison between the regulatory process for approving pipelines and the regulatory process to open up health facilities to save Canadians is offensive. To suggest that there could be a trade-off, mm -hmm. that if one party supported an easier approval process for pipelines in exchange for an easier approval process for opening safe consumption sites is also offensive. Now, Mr. Speaker, this doesn't surprise me. What I am surprised, Mr. Speaker, and where I'll conclude is, is the Liberal government's refusal to entertain the New Democrats' two amendments. First, the New Democrats moved to amend the Act to better apportion the burden on an applicant for these sites to make it more appropriate. We uh, believe that the six criteria of the Supreme Court ought to be taken into account by the Health Minister, but it's only the local conditions and the resources available and the need for the local community that the applicants should have the burden of meeting. And the impact on crime rates and the expression of opposition or support for the site and the regulatory structure are matters for the minister to use her discretion. 
We should not burden the applicant for that. And so our second amendment would have allowed provincial health ministers to bypass that process on an emergency basis and ask the health minister for an ex Section 56 exemption in order to open up temporary emergency overdose prevention sites that are operating in Vancouver today, right now against the law. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm disappointed the Liberal government rejected those amendments, but the New Democrats will continue to work to move this act swiftly through Parliament so we can start saving lives as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.